Okay, so today we have Darius as our client, and my name is John, and I'm going to be his trainer. We're going to go through a seven-site skin fold. It's really important that we ask our client a few questions before digging into the seven-site skin fold. One is if they're okay removing their shirt, because it is going to be a little intrusive. So Darius, are you okay removing your shirt? I'm fine. Okay. The second component is we're going to be taking some measurements from specific spots, and we're going to need to mark those spots on his body. So that would be the second question you'd want to ask. Are you okay with me marking on your body? Yes. And the most important one is that it, making sure that your client's okay with you actually physically touching them. So Darius, are you okay with me touching you on your body? Yes. Okay. Once you have all of those permissions, then you can go about doing your seven side skin fold. If your client is not okay doing any of those, then you're going to have to modify and adjust the way you do things. If they're not comfortable with you doing a seven side skin fold, that's when you may want to push them to somebody else that can maybe do an assessment like a, a bod pod or underwater weighing, or maybe you push them into doing a tinea bioelectrical impedance. So now let's go through each of the seven sites and what we're looking for and how you can improve your technique. Okay, so now we have our client. He's allowed us to have the shirt removed. He's okay with us touching him. He's okay with us measuring. The three sites that we need to measure and mark the midpoints on are going to be the pectoral, the tricep, and the thigh. The first site we're going to address is we're going to look at the pectoral. So I'm going to take a measurement from the anterior aspect of his axillary to the nipple line. I'm going to take my tape, I'm going to pull it taut, I'm going to put the end of the tape in the anterior aspect of his axillary, and I'm going to pull it all the way across to his nipple line. The measurement we get is six and three quarter inches, and we'll want to take the midpoint from there. Our measurement is 6.75. Half of 6.75 is three and three eighths, or 3.375. So on the tape, I'm looking for the three eighths mark. I'm gonna use my two fingers to keep that tape taut so that I can get an accurate reading. I'm gonna find the three eighths mark. So these are all in sixteenths. So I'm going to count every two. There's one-eighth, two-eighth, three-eighths. I'm going to mark that line. The next location that I need to take a measurement from is on his tricep. So I'm going to locate his olecranon process. In order to do that, I have to physically touch his arm and follow it all the way down to where the drop-off is. You're going to have to stand behind him, so posterior. Once you find that divot, you're going to place the top of the tape into that divot. You're going to ask your client to bend their arm, flex their arm, their elbow joint, to 90 degrees, and you're going to take a measurement straight down the posterior aspect of the humerus, down to the olecranon process. We have a measurement of 14.5. Half of 14.5 is going to be 7.25. So we're going to take our measurement from the bottom of the, from the olecranon process up the humerus, and we're going to mark 7.25. We're going to make sure that we're on the posterior aspect. And once we have that, we're good to go. We want to make sure we measure from the bottom up because his elbow is never going to change the measurement. However, if we measure from the top down, we have a higher likelihood that we're going to be off in our original location. And now this can raise or lower where our actual pinch is going to take place. So to minimize error, and to help with repeatability, we want to measure from a more stable landmark up. The last measurement we need to take is for the thigh pinch. So the first thing we need to do is we have to locate the greater trochanter. A quick trick you can use to find out basically where it's at, you're going to ask your client to place their thumb on their iliac crest. So it's the spot right where the thumb drops off the hip and into the abdomen. Once your client has that location found, you're going to ask them to extend their finger straight down. And right around where the middle finger ends up is right about where the greater trochanter is. So once you see that visually, you can place your thumb there to get an idea. You can ask your client to relax. And you're going to want to physically palpate in order to find the greater trochanter. So for him, he placed us here. But as I palpate, I find that his greater trochanter is a little higher. It's actually here. Now what I need to do is I'm going to have my client move his hand out of the way so you can see. I'm going to have him pull his shorts taut because they're a little baggy and we don't have any sliders or anything underneath. I'm going to place 
the top of my tape measure at that location. I'm going to draw the tape measure straight down to the top of his knee. If your client's a client that's okay helping you, you can ask them to hold this for you. But if you see, that starts to make his knee bend. So we want to make sure that we're locked out. We want to make sure all of this is out of the way. So you might have to figure something out on your own. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull the tape with my right hand. And I'm going to make an adjustment. I'm using my right index finger and I'm measuring straight down to get a location of 14.5 inches. At that point in time, I'm going to come to the front of his leg. I'm going to ask my client if they're okay pulling their shorts up, which we've already discussed earlier. My client's okay. I'm going to measure from the superior aspect of his patella on the anterior side of his femur. We know that half of 14.5 is 7.25. I'm going to measure straight up, pull the tape taut, and I'm going to take my mark. Next, we're going to take a pinch from each of our seven sites. So we're going to go through the pec, tricep, we're going to do the subscapular, we're going to do the abdomen, we're going to do the iliac, we're going to do the mid-axillary, where we have a couple options that we'll discuss, and then we're also going to do the thigh. First, we're going to start with our client. We're going to do the pec pectoral pinch. So, the first thing I need to do is I need to find my mark. I know where my mark's at. I'm going to pinch him very aggressively because my job is to try to pull the fat from the muscle. You can see a nice crest is developed. This line is going to be the midpoint of where my calipers go on a diagonal. When pinching, it's important that you don't come out away from the skin or go in too deep. Some individuals, their skin may be a little more oily, so you might see that your grip will start to pinch away. So you have to really be aggressive with your hands. You could potentially use both hands to take a deeper pinch, which is going to be pretty painful. If you look at his face, you'll see. Okay, But again, we're looking for accuracy. So now that we have the pinch, we're going to put the calipers midway between. And we're going to hold for a count of two seconds. 1,001, 1,002. We're then going to record our measurement as 13 millimeters. We'll push the button down so that we don't pinch them even more. And we're going to relax and come back to that after our six other sights. Okay, when doing your sights, we need to make sure that if there's a posterior site, you're either physically moving your client so that you can get to the pinch, or if your client doesn't really want to move, you need to move to get to the pinch yourself. So for this demonstration, I'm going to move my client so that you have a good visual. We're going to move on to the tricep. Again, I'm going to take a pinch above the actual mark. I'm going to put my calipers on so that it's midway between the pinch. Wait two seconds, 1,001, 1,002. We're going to take our measurement at five millimeters, undo the caliper, let go, and let him relax. Record our data. Our next location is going to be subscapular, so this is going to be a posterior pinch. We're looking for his shoulder blade. So you can ask your client to chicken wing in order to find the inferior angle of, this, of the scapula. Once you become proficient, you won't need to have your subject do that. You can feel down his back or her back and you can find that angle with your index finger. For demonstrations, I'm gonna have him go back. You can see the inferior angle of, this, of the scapula where it comes to the point. I place my finger there, my index finger. I ask him to release. I open my thumb as wide as possible and I take as big of a pinch as possible and it's aggressive. Again, you place the calipers on a diagonal midpoint between the pinch and you move your head into position so you can read the calipers. We wait two seconds, 1001, 1002, and we take the measurement at 31 millimeters. Push the button, release, let go of the pinch. Our next location is gonna be the abdomen. We're gonna place our index finger just to the right of his belly button. We're gonna open our thumb up as much as possible 
We're going to try to take a nice horizontal line and we're going to pull across as much tissue and skin as possible, getting as much fat in there. Again, place your calipers halfway in the middle of that crest. Weight 1001, 1002. We're going to take the measurement at 28 millimeters, push the button, let out, let go of the pinch. When doing the abdomen pinch, you have two options. You can place your thumb to the left of the belly button, rotate it over, and open up as much as possible, or you can just come right in with your index finger just to the left of his belly button or her belly button and take a pinch. Our next location is going to be the iliac. So just like earlier when we found the greater trochanter and we asked our subject to put their thumb in it, this time we're going to put ours in. So your client's hand may get in the way, so you can ask them to place it on their shoulder so it's out of their way, out of your way. You can ask them to move it back out of the way. Whatever works best for you. For me, I find it easier if I ask them to move their hand out of the way and it just stays away from me and I can get in there easier. One thing you need to do though is you have to make sure that you recognize where the anterior aspect of the axillary is, so the front of the armpit. You need to follow that straight down to where the iliac is going to meet. Once you have his hand out of the way, again, you know where that point's going to be. You find his iliac where your thumb goes in. And right where it goes in, you'll see that a nice fold occurs on its own. It's going to be a diagonal fold. Once I have that, I'm going to rotate my hand so it grabs this fold on an angle. It's going to be an aggressive pinch. It's going to be a, a large pinch. I want to make sure that my calipers, again, go midway between the crest. I'm going to wait 1,001, 1,002, and we're going to take the measurement of 30 millimeters. We want to be sure that we are not too far forward with our pinch because it will interfere with our abdomen pinch. We want to make sure that we're not too far behind or we won't get an accurate pinch. So again, anterior aspect of the axillary, I find where that fold occurs on its own. I rotate my hand around and I take a diagonal pinch, place the calipers. Our next site is going to be mid-axillary. So now we're looking at a point in the midpoint of his armpit, so between anterior and posterior, but we're also looking for a point that is even with his xiphoid process, the bottom of his sternum. So you can have your client, if they're not okay with you touching, find that place for you, and you can look across, and you can take your pinch. You have an option here. You can take a vertical pinch, or you can take a horizontal pinch. You have the choice. For me, I get more right here in this horizontal pinch on this individual. I'm going to take a horizontal pinch. It's important that you record which type of pinch you take. If you take a horizontal, the next time your client comes in, you're going to take a horizontal. You're not going to go back and forth. So you're going to record their midpoints and whether or not their mid axillary is horizontal or vertical. On some individuals, they may be more muscular than others. You need to be careful because some of their lap may come across in this. If that's the case, measure a distance anterior of the lat, take your pinch, and record how far forward you come. If you don't have an individual that's very muscular, then you'll just take your pinch as normal. Our last site that we're going to take a pinch at is the thigh. So we've already taken the measurement. We're going to ask our client to take their right foot, place the heel on top of their left foot. If he needs to use me for balance, I'm giving him the option to place this hand on my shoulder as I take the pinch. We're going to need to make sure that we pull the shorts up high enough to get to the pinch. So your client can assist you with this. If they're uncomfortable with this, you're going to have to take a pinch through the clothes and then you're going to have to measure how thick the clothes are. So it all depends on the comfortability of your client. Most clients don't have an issue with this. Most. Asterisk. So we're going to have our client hold the shorts up. I'm going to take a very aggressive pinch above the mark. Once I have that pinch, I take my calipers. I move my body so that I can see. 1,001, 1,002, and we take that measurement at 7 millimeters. Push the button, let go, make sure our client doesn't fall over. 